Surfs here with another video. Now it's not going to be a shave video tonight, but what it's going to be is a two-part. This is going to be part one on uh, how to restore a vintage EverReady brush. This is the restored. These are the restored models. Uh, they're both C40s and uh, they have brand new knots. They've been polished, sanded, brand new sunrise knots. So this is going to be a two part episode because it's going to be a long one. And I, you know, I don't like making them too long. So uh, part one and part two. So uh, I hope you enjoy. Here's part one. All right, Ken surfs here and we're going to try to film the restoration of this ever ready C40 brush. As you can see, the uh, letters are uh, a little worn here. It definitely has the ridge. You can see that ridge right there going vertical. And it definitely has the ridge going around here. So we're going to document, hopefully, the restoration of this. All right, and here's some of the things we'll be using today. We've got the uh, Dremel with multiple bits. We've got a soft cloth, some water for wet sanding. We've got the uh, Flitz polish. We've got the 2500 sandpaper, the 2000 sandpaper, the 1200 sandpaper, the 320 sandpaper, and I have not put out the uh, 220 sandpaper yet. We've got the Big Gulp uh, Mountain Dew to keep us going. Oh, and I've got uh, the Zero and the Double Zero uh, Steel Wool. That actually works real good. Fortunately on this one, we're just gonna have to try to polish it up a little bit and uh, remove that line and take this off. And I will take that off by using a zip tie, zip tying that and cutting it. So let's see how that works. All right, so first we're gonna zip tie this brush up so I don't lose all these bristles all over here. Very good. Next, we'll uh, cut off those bristles. doesn't work. Should have done that in the first place. Now obviously I do not intend on finishing this today because I have not received the knot yet. I ordered two Sunrise knots, 24 millimeter from uh, Florida and they shipped yesterday but I'm in California. So let me uh, clean this up a little bit more and then I'll get ready to drill this out. All right, I've got that uh, cut down pretty much. I'm gonna put a few pilot holes through this. out with. I'll try this one and I've actually got the, uh, the vertical ones. So we'll try this one first. We'll see if we can clean some of that up.
don't want to go too far yet because I don't want to get into the uh, plastic here. So let me uh, get a razor blade. I'm going to trim these down a little bit further so I can see exactly where they end and the plastic begins. All right, I cut that down a little bit so you can see where we are at right now. Nice and light, nice and hollow. It's amazing the things that you find on the internet, but uh, you might find this of use if you're trying to decide what type of knot to put in. Well, it's obvious here that that knot that was in there matches a nickel. So it's pretty much a 22 millimeter knot that was in there. Now I've ordered uh, two knots from uh, a very helpful gentleman on the internet, Anthony from Florida, and they are on the way. But I have ordered some uh, 18 knot or 18 millimeter knots from China, Badger, and they are on the way. But uh, I do believe I'm gonna put a 25 in this one. So I'm gonna get this cleaned out a little more and then I'm gonna stop and I'm gonna start focusing on uh, just polishing this up and having it ready, ready for when the knot arrives and then I can do a little more work on it. Pretty close now, pretty close to the actual plastic. So now we're gonna maybe proceed with a drum sander. All right, we got that knot completely out of there. I can see a number 10 the very bottom in the red. Now, what Anthony uh, McKenzie Jr. does when he restores one of these, he will then flatten that top off in order to receive the uh, 25 millimeter knot, which would uh, be the size of this quarter. Now, what I'm gonna do, since I don't have the knot here, I'm not gonna start taking any more out in case it's off by a little bit. But what I am gonna do is what he did, is he weighted his handle down, the hollow handle down, with 15 pennies, he says. So let's see what 15 pennies weighs. Fifteen pennies weighs one point five ounces. Yeah. Now what I'm thinking of doing is not to copy exactly but I have something else I might want to weigh them down with. I have a, basically a man cave in the garage with the pinball machines and pachinko machines. So I might use some of these pachinko balls to weigh this handle down and give it a little bit more weight. All right, so what I found out is uh, this uh, 1500 brush is approximately the same weight as the C40 and it weighs 1.5 ounces with the uh, bristles in it. The handle alone the hollowed out handle on this weighs 0.5 ounces. Now I just had a restored, I bought a restored one off eBay. This is the uh, 250 Pure Badger model and it has a weighted handle too. And that one checks in at four ounces. So what I'm gonna try to do is I'm gonna, I like the weight of that four ounces. I'm gonna uh, see how many pachinko balls it takes to get that close to that All weight. All right, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 pachinko balls. So a little more than 15 pennies, so it is going to come in a little healthier weight than, uh, than that would. All right, I actually decided to pull two of those pachinko balls out of there, and we'll get a weight of 2.5 ounces there, because that's what the 15 pennies and the quarter would weigh inside that. And the epoxy's got to have some weight, too. So it might be a little lighter than this uh, four ounce one, which feels great, but uh, it's got a nice feel to it now. So we're gonna get some epoxy and we'll put that in there. All right, I've decided to uh, reduce that weight just slightly. So I've got two, four, six, eight, ten of them in there. And that weight gives you 2.5 ounces. So then we'll see what she weighs with the epoxy after she dries. All right, and they didn't have the uh, type that, uh, that uh, Anthony had recommended. 
Uh, he uses the two part that come in two plastic bottles. Uh, they were out of them. I went to Hobby Lobby and I went to Michael's and uh, Michael's actually hardly sold anything. But uh, ended up going to Ace Hardware and got this for uh, the nice price of $6.99. So I'm gonna get this all set up and we'll uh, do the next step. Now I got some coffee stirrers. I've got the uh, 10 pachinko balls and I'm going to squeeze the Gorilla Glue into this and then mix it up a little bit and start putting the pachinko balls in there. All right, I'm going to break this off. Get the air out of it. There we go. All right, all the air is out of it. Now, let's send some into here. Hold it a second. See how we are? No, oh, we do a lot more than that. All right, we put the lid on this for a second. Let's stir it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Look at that. Let's get that old guy under there. She's flowing good. Leveling out. Get any air bubbles out of there. Perfect. She went nice and flat. See that? Nice and flat. Now I may have to build that base up a little bit, but at least I've got the weight in there and the handle will be solid at this step.